I'm freaking out. I've always been a little too concerned about my future. A little too anxious to be a grown-up with a grown-up job and a grown-up apartment. I've always wanted to have my own little routine. To make my own little dinner in my own little kitchen. To vacuum my own little hardwood floors with my own little expensive name brand vacuum cleaner. There's already so much uncertainty, and I'm only 20 years old. And yet, I feel like I'm only 20 years old isn't even an excuse anymore. Of course, there's also the age-old question often spoken or thought of with a great tremor. Is this my peak? What if I just become less talented, less marketable, less everything after this point? You know how in the heyday of Ellis Island, the Statue of Liberty was the first thing immigrants would see? Well, from 1885 to 1896, that actually wasn't true. It was a seven-story elephant-shaped hotel and brothel called Elephantine Colossus at Coney Island that the immigrants saw first. It was a tragedy when it burnt down. I wish I could have seen it. My favorite movie was made in 1932. It's called Freaks. Oh, here it is now. It's pre-code, so they didn't have to worry about silly regulations like married couples sleeping in two beds or kisses lasting no longer than three seconds. The cast is made up of real sideshow performers, but it doesn't make fun of them. It shows the amazing feats they're capable of. Their compassion and kindness, their overflowing humanity. I once found an old reel of it in an antique shop called Zaborski Emporium, this incredible multi storied warehouse filled with thousands of old hardware, doors, beer taps, commercial signs, God, just anything you could think of. Everything was in there, even the studio tag. There was another film in there, too, that looked like a Japanese porno from the 60s. I bought it. The old man who owns the place, Stan, insisted on lifting the extremely heavy reel for me. As soon as he kneeled down and took it in his arms, lifting with the strained expression of one of those Olympic power lifters, blood started to spurt from a cut in his forehead. A glass chandelier had fallen on his head the week before and he was still picking shards of glass from his skin. It was more blood than I've ever seen in my entire life. There's still a dark brown stain from Stan's blood on the outer metal of my reel. I thought he was gonna die right there in front of me. He's okay though. Anyway, there's this part in the movie where the freaks, the Siamese twins, the half boy, the pinheads, the living torso, the sword swallower, the bearded lady, the strong man, they're all celebrating the marriage of the circus owner, a dwarf named Hans, to a beautiful and greedy acrobat who only wants him for money and fame. They go into a chant to welcome her to their sideshow family. We'll make her one of us, a loving cup, a loving cup. We accept a one of us, we accept a one of us. Every year, I go to the mermaid parade at Coney Island and get a hot dog and fries that you eat with a tiny, two-tined red fork. Sometimes I even ride the cyclone if I can get up the nerve. 
but I always have the hot dog. They used to call them Coney Island Caviar. My best friend fainted in the original Nathan's once. It was really hot, and we'd been watching the parade for a couple hours. The lines at Nathan's went out onto the sidewalk. After about 45 minutes in line, she told me that she didn't feel so well. And then she dropped. I caught her in my arms, and she felt as heavy as an anchor. Her eyelids fluttered as gravity overwhelmed her. I handed her off to somebody else and stayed in line. She felt better as soon as she had a hot dog. Whenever I feel really, truly bad about myself, I make myself think the things that she would say to me. And then I imagine her saying to herself the things that I say to myself. And it makes me ache, but finally, I can understand. At Coney Island, they like misfits. I think that's why I've always felt so cozy there. The boardwalk is full of people like me, like us. In high school, someone once told me that I seem like I'm from another planet, just here to visit Earth. I'd never been able to express that feeling in words before then. That feeling like you want to go home, but you are home. I'm really not that different. I'm just bad at hiding who I really am. Sometimes I wish that I could hide what I'm feeling, but it's always just there in the flesh, plain as day across my face. Sometimes I wish that I could care less about the things I care a lot about, but that just makes me even more obsessive and intense. I'm not so good at casual. I'm downright bad at pretending. There was an elephant at Coney Island who got a reputation for being bad. Topsy. It was because she killed her trainer once, though, and I've definitely never killed someone. They decided to execute her in 1903. What happened next is not the Coney Island I know and love. I guess I can look at this as a reminder of something that I have a hard time remembering. There's always a gray area. Even Coney Island exists in that gray area. Well, they wanted to hang Topsy. They electrocuted her, too. Some people say it was so that Thomas Edison could advertise the true power of his system of electricity. Regardless of whether or not that's true, the Edison Movie Company filmed the whole thing anyway. It just goes to show that people have this kind of stuff in them, huh? When I was a young man, I ran away from home. I went to join the circus. I went to see the cotton candy world and make me lots of money on my own for Molly. Oh, my pretty Molly, she's waiting all alone. Someday soon I will return to her. Then I made the big time bright lights show biz I'm really in the circus There's only one thing wrong I haven't saved a penny On my own 
or Molly. Ah, my pretty Molly, but she's writing every day. Molly understands, so it's okay. Ride a windy boxcar and see a thousand children, young and old. Oh, that grease paint smile can hide your soul. Here comes the carousel, guess which town it is, feel the thrill. Grease paint covers everything, but winter's chill. my peak. It's not as straight up and down as I would have thought. It's loopy. Despite the visual, it's not about a peak or having hit my peak or not having hit my peak yet. It's not about that at all. It's about being good enough. At every point I would have questioned if I were good enough. I would have sat in the car, gripping the metal bar with white knuckles and sweaty palms, and inching ever so slowly up, I would doubt myself. And then I would have plummeted down the other end, my stomach whirling like I'd gotten my heart broken. And then I would have stepped a few feet back from the ride so that I could see the whole coaster at once. And my eyes would find the highest point, and I would still think, Was I good enough there? At my peak? How do I overcome this? I know that I must, but that's as far as I've gotten. I know that once I overcome this, I, w I will be a little less quiet. I'll introduce myself to the most powerful person in the room as though I deserve to shake her hand. I will never question if I belong somewhere. I will see myself through the eyes of the people who love me the most, instead of those who appreciate me the least. When I used to envision myself as an adult, puttering about my charmingly eclectic and historic antebellum apartment, these weren't the concerns I thought I'd have. Actually, the fantasy never involved any worries or problems. That's what makes it a fantasy, I guess. So, yeah. I'm freaking out. Why should I sigh? If there's no blue in the sky, I'll be happy in a cozy little spot where the sweet forget me not remember. Why should I pine? Because the sun doesn't shine. When I'll get the sweetest kiss I ever got where the sweet forget me not remember.